Julia Roberts. Since 1990, this dazzling movie star is America's girl next door. The versatile actress has a talented repertoire as wide as her signature smile. I get the romantic comedies and the, you know, dramas and the, the girl next door and the, everything. Born in Atlanta, Georgia on October 28, 1967, Julia Fiona Roberts was Walter and Betty Lou Roberts' third child. Both stage actors, the Roberts ran a children's theater from their home that defied the stringent color lines in the South. Black children were welcome to take part in the plays, including the children of Martin Luther King. When Julie was small, her big brother Eric and big sister Lisa were both involved with the theater workshops, but finances were really tight, and when Julie was just four, her parents divorced. 16-year-old Eric moved in with their father, who sold vacuum cleaners to make a living, while the girls moved in with their mother, Betty Lou, who became a church secretary to make ends meet. Before long, Betty Lou remarried a man called Michael Motes, and they had another daughter named Nancy. Julie found solace from her shattered family in her love of animals, particularly horses. She spent hours and hours caring for and riding horses, and actually she wanted to be a vet when she was very young. When Julie was only 10, she was delivered another enormous blow. Her father, Walter Roberts, at the age of only 47, died of cancer, a deeply disappointed and disillusioned man. You know, when we talk about divorce, sometimes we don't take into consideration that it's actually families who divorce. There's the impact on the child, not only of the separation of the parents and the uncertainty that comes with that, but then the introduction of a step-parent. And then when you add to that the death of one of the parents, the impact can just be enormous and sometimes even devastating. Luckily, Julia started early with a positive attitude in spite of her personal difficulties. Life evolves and becomes happier and different and kind of takes a different form every day. So I don't um, measure happiness as a fait accompli, you know, oh, this is the happiest and I'm done, you know, because then there's no reason to get out of bed. As she grew older, Julie was continually faced with more struggles and problems. Amazingly, looking at her now, she was teased mercilessly by her classmates for her big mouth, thick glasses, and tall, skinny, very lanky build. School was equally hard for Julie academically. Convinced that one of her teachers didn't like her, she actually asked to sit out the class and spend her time in the library where she just devoured all kinds of books and it was really here at this time that the seeds were planted for the young girl's love of literature and all things theatrical. If I'm doing a comedy I think oh you just long for a drama and think it's so much easier and then you do a drama and you think you know comedy is just a breeze I should be doing a comedy so it's always what you're not doing is what you long for. It was big brother Eric who broke through first. The handsome 20-something started in a soap then appeared in several films, ultimately garnering an Oscar nomination for his supporting role in the 1986 hit, Runaway Train. Julie had just graduated high school. She didn't go on to college, but she decided to move to New York and live with her sister, Lisa, to pursue her now ambition of becoming an actress. And at that time, she clearly came to terms with that enormous grin, which was soon to become a great asset. She changed her name to Julia when she discovered the name Julie Roberts was already taken in the Screen Actors Guild registry. Julia's career got started with a little help from her big brother. When Eric Roberts was cast in the period piece Blood Red, he convinced the director that his real little sister could play his character's little sister. Julia got the part, but the movie was not widely seen. Julia finally landed a much meatier role as a bass player in the romantic comedy Satisfaction. Now also starring in that film was Justine Bateman of Family Ties fame and a little known actor from Ireland called Liam Neeson. Now in the film it was Justine Bateman and Liam Neeson who fall in love, but in real life it was Julia and Liam who fell for each other, hook, line and sinker. Even though Liam was much older than Julia, 
the two were mad about each other and quickly moved in together in Venice, California. In 1988, Julia auditioned for the classic chick flick Mystic Pizza, but was turned down for being too fair for the Portuguese part. The determined actress dyed her hair black and tried again, this time snagging the role of beautiful but aimless Daisy. Clearly from the beginning, Julia took acting seriously. When you play a character, you're giving them their one chance at having a life, and I don't want to shortchange anybody. Mystic Pizza was a hit, but shortly after rapping, a 21-year-old was struck down by a mysterious illness. No one was really sure what it was, but she was laid up in hospital for a few weeks and then had to spend several more weeks convalescing under her mother's care. Now, it was during this time that she came across a script she'd previously overlooked. It was Steel Magnolias. Oscar-winning actress Sally Field was so impressed with Julia's talent that she pushed to get her cast as her own. Sally's daughter, Shelby, in the film. And of course, for Julia, it was amazing, starring opposite some real heavy hitters, such as Daryl Hannah, Dolly Parton, and Shirley MacLaine. Certainly on all the movies I've done, I've, I've had great opportunities to learn things, uh, whether it be things to do or things not to do, you know. Um, Steel Magnolias was a great environment for that, working with these tremendous women who have all been, you know, making movies for a long time and they know the ropes and they know what's up and what's down. And so that was a really great uh, learning environment that I really enjoyed. And, uh, you know, with every picture you make, you, you learn more about what you want to do with making movies. Julia won a Golden Globe and picked up an Oscar nomination for her efforts in Steel Magnolias. She also picked up a new boyfriend, Dylan McDermott. It wasn't long before the couple became engaged and moved in together. The next year, 23-year-old Julia was up for the role of a foul-mouthed drug-addled hooker in a film called 3000. But then the deal fell apart and was taken over by Disney, where director Gary Marshall turned it into a much gentler piece. Retitled Pretty Woman, Disney went after adorable actress Meg Ryan for the lead. Sally Field came to the rescue again and pushed hard for Julia. With her irrepressible charm, Julia blew audiences out of their seats. Made for only $14 million, the film grossed $178 million in the U.S. alone. The new Hollywood It Girl won another Golden Globe and was again nominated for an Oscar. All of a sudden, the pretty woman had to handle an onslaught of fame. She took it in stride. I don't think it's so hard. I mean, I think that you make a choice to talk about certain things and make a choice to establish your own personal boundaries and and your own um, comfort zone of what's respectful and what's inappropriate and and just kind of conduct yourself in that way and act accordingly I think people understand that I think people I think sometimes people want to just know what the boundary is and it's not so much that they want to be disrespectful and cross it they just want to know how far can they go and at that point then they you know kind of back off Five days after rapping Pretty Woman, Julia started work on a spooky thriller called Flatliners, which involved a group of medical students investigating the line between life and death. Off screen, Julia became involved with her co-star, Kiefer Sutherland, who at the time was actually married and had a daughter. He quickly sought a divorce and got engaged to Julia. When we come back, Julia plays the role of a real runaway bride. Reportedly, bad boy Sutherland cheated on his fiancée with a stripper. Julia called off the marriage at the last minute. 